All right, so now we're going to talk about an example. Um, in principle, it's a basic example, but it's an important example. Um, so now we want to know how much energy it takes to configure this, um, this set of charges. And that gets really tricky because you have some energy, you know, you have an interaction between all of these charges with the other charges. So how do you know which to include? And the way to think about this is that you start with one charge. Um, we're going to start with this charge right here and imagine for the moment that we just don't have these. Actually, let me, I don't think I have a white pen. Um, we're going to imagine that these charges are not there yet. So when that charge is sitting there all alone, it has no potential energy. So there is no potential energy for this configuration. We add one charge. We bring in the positive three microcoulombs from infinity. Um, and at infinity, the system with these two charges are separated by an infinite amount. There is no potential energy in the system. And we're going to add potential energy to the system. So now we can calculate the potential energy, the work. In step two is going to be K Q one Q two over R one two nine times ten to the nine Newton meters squared per coulomb squared times six. I'm doing some multiplica multiplication before writing stuff down. I'm taking two times three is 6 times 10 to the negative 12, because micro means 10 to the negative 6, coulomb squared over 10 to the negative 2 meters. All right. Now, I'm going to be, I'm going to count my powers. So if I count my powers, 10, that's right, 9 plus 9 minus 12 is minus 3 divided by minus 2 is minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1. So I have a 10 to the minus 1. And then I have 9 times 6. So, my answer is 54 times 10 to the negative 1, or 5.4, and I've done SI units, so this is all joules. All right, and now we're going to bring in charge 3 from infinity. And now, and I'm not, I'm going to set this up, but I'm not going to do, well, I might go ahead and do the whole calculation. All right, now I have to do two potential energies. So I have K, let me not use yellow, work in step three is K, and then I'm bringing in, well, Yeah, I'll just set this up. K, Q, 1, Q, 3, over R, 1, 3, plus K, Q, 2, Q, 3, over R, 2, 3.
And here, this gets a little trickier. So this is charge one, this is charge two, this is charge three. And this distance is then the square root of two centimeters. So nine times 10 to the nine Newton meters squared per coulomb squared times big bracket Four times two is eight times ten to the negative twelve over the square root of two coulomb squared per meter plus three times four is twelve times ten to the negative twelve. Oh, and this should be in centimeters, so I need to put in a time 10 to the negative 2. And this is a 10 to the negative 2 coulomb squared per meter. So I'd have to plug that in. I do not have a readily accessible calculator, so I'm not going to do that live. And then you bring in the last charge. And now you have to consider K, Q, 4, Q, 1 over R plus My stylus may be choking. My stylus is just broken. Nope, there we go. K, Q, four. Q2 over R, and it should be 4, 1, 4, 2, K, Q, 4, Q, 3 over R, 4, 3. So you have to consider all of the possible pairings. Now, one thing to note is that what you're doing is that you're in, if you look at the terms you got from everything, you only have each set of indices one. So you only consider the potential between charge one and charge two one instead of all possible orderings of pairings. 